Now, I know I shouldn't, but I just can't help it. I received an email from a fellow named John Allen uh, recently. He was one of the lead organizers of a robocalls demonstration that took place in Toronto, I think it was a week ago or last weekend. Others are being planned. Now, this was brilliant. His email was headed, and I quote, Egyptian revolutionary leader to speak at Toronto rally against your voter suppression. And he explained that uh, Shariz Azur, influential in promoting the revolution that toppled Hosni Mubarak last year, will be speaking about the power of unity in enabling the toppling of illegitimate governments. In town for his wedding, Mr. Azur is an ardent democracy activist and is concerned with Canada's democratic reputation potentially being jeopardized following the voter suppression that occurred in the last federal election. <laughs> okay. In town for his wedding. So was he just in for the weekend to get married before going back to the Cairo back barricades? Or, or was this some sort of immigration scam? Hmm. And did he really fear that the world was about to condemn Canada as an undemocratic dictatorship? The plot thickens like some, well, some bad poutine. Now this unintentionally hilarious email went on. It's really great. Following the alleged election fraud that occurred during last year's federal election, patriotic Canadians of all political persuasions are uniting to demand a fully independent parliamentary inquiry, as well as a criminal investigation, complete accountability up to and including the Prime Minister's office and including the indictment of Prime Minister Stephen Harper himself, if necessary. Wow! Interesting stuff, especially in that the actual demonstration was really very small and composed mainly of, of the hard left, a few eccentrics and fanatics. But being a patriotic Canadian, I wrote back to this guy stating that in many ways, this is worse than Egypt or even Syria. Sorry if I sound emotional, but I've actually been shaking and crying over this. I never thought it would happen in Canada. <laughs> I didn't think he'd respond, but so Alan responds to me, I'm glad you feel that way. Do you still write columns for The Sun or just blogs? Sorry, I, I haven't been in the loop. So I wrote back, uh, I mainly concentrate, now, listen to this, I mainly concentrate now on the Fair Trade Holistic Farm and Inclusive Daycare Centre I set up a couple of years ago. It doesn't pay what journalism did, but it is fulfilling. I fear, though, that we are about to be taken over by fascism. Robot calls are just the beginning. Surely he gets it now. He replied to me, indeed, sir, I agree. So now we were good friends, you know, so I wrote back again. Do you think we need to take direct action? How about occupying the House of Commons or Little Mosque on the Prairie? Just a thought. Now this time I think he may have got it. Not sure. I didn't get a response. But it was fun while it lasted. Now in case you think I was being cruel to someone obviously in need of help, remember that one of the main speakers at Comrade Allen's little gathering was Zafar Bangash, an extremist Muslim leader, probably best known for his absolute hatred of Israel and adoration of Iran. It's odd, really, in that there are no free elections in Iran. Demonstrations are put down with numerous fatalities. Gay people are publicly hanged and women dissidents tortured and raped. Now, you can fall humorless leftists most of the time, but just imagine if these lunatics ever had genuine power. Well, nobody, nobody would be laughing then.